Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Red Text. My name is Voga and I am Voga Illumicente on Instagram. And I am Rai, aka the Mestizo Mystic on Instagram. And today we have such a special guest. This person is one of my girls here in Los Angeles. Um, one of my closest friends, honestly, um, a fellow vendor an incredible artist. Um, we have Adrian Maciel. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you pronounced it perfectly. Okay, girl, I, girl, I never say your last name, so I'm just like Maciel. Um, yeah, so Adrian Maciel is here with us today. And um, first off, before we go into anything, Adrian, how are you, my darling, darling friend? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing in Infernal, hail Satan. I'm ready to talk about some spooky shit. <laughs> Are you fighting Sorry. with something, Voga? I was uh I was closing my window. Um so yeah, how's life been for you? I know that um you recently had an event. How 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 are just things? How's business? How's how's life? How's uh how's everything? Uh, it's going good. Yeah, we did an event this weekend. Um, it was really, really good. It was really cool. Um, and yeah, I'm just gearing up for the next one. The next one that we're doing is going to be um, Vampire Bazaar at Bar Sinister on I'm gonna be there with you. February 18th, Saturday, February 18th. Yes. Oh, well, by the time to... by the time that this is published, it's going to be passed. But uh, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's OK. But I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to see you this weekend. Yes. Um. Rai, my darling friend, how are you? I'm good. I am beginning to learn a new uh, style of divination, like a whole new medium, which I'm super stoked for because it's something I've been wanting to do. Uh, City Ooh. Alchemist hosted a corn divination course, and they also offered uh, the corn to buy on their website, like the pre-dried and colored corn to use for divination. So I'm just waiting for that to come in the mail, and I'm so excited to start experimenting with a whole new medium. Uh, and something more in touch with like my Mexican ancestry too. So that's super exciting. And then, uh, yeah, life, life's been good. I don't have too much to complain about. I could, but I'll, I'll choose not to. <laughs> oh, good. I, I, I mean, I like it when we, when you complain because usually it's because we're talking shit. So yeah, um, I'm cursing but... my manager. That's a fun update. Yes, that's true. Okay. That's right. I can't wait to get updates on how that's happening <laughs> because, Ooh, that's so juicy. I love that. Um, but how are you? I'm doing actually really well. You know, it's it's strange. We're going through this weird. The, there's um. I'm learning some things about some people that I have in my life, uh, mm. or no longer in my life um, on purpose. Um, and it's funny because Adrian knows the tea. Um, so it's just I I started to like kind of contemplate a lot of things in regards to relationships and how cultivating relationships is very. Um, I, it's the way that I cultivate relationships now with people is definitely different from the way that I used to cultivate relationships. Like in my early twenties, um, mm -hmm. I used to give a lot, I used to be a lot more forgiving and I used to give people a lot more room to take advantage of me. Um, and within like my, the last like couple of years of my twenties and going into my thirties, which I am now 32, um, I've learned that, um, I'm done wasting my time. Um, and I'm done um, giving grace, pe uh, giving grace to people who don't deserve it. And it's one of those things that um, 
you know, making new friends is more like uh, trying, not necessarily trying to figure out whether they they vibe with me or not. It's either you get it or you don't, and if you don't, you're done, right? Mm. So um, I'm just done wasting my time. And recently, there was just something that happened between me and a mutual friend that, or a mutual uh, someone that I knew through somebody else. Um, and it was a little bit of a learning experience for me in regards to how well, um, how well it works to cut people out, but also how people react to when you do those things. Um, which, by the way, how you react to how I drop you is none of my business. <laughs> it really, it, it really does not matter to me because I dropped you for a reason. I cut you out for a reason. And, um... And that's that. Um, but other than that, everything is wonderful. Like what Adrian um, mentioned, we do have an event this week. Oh, no, next weekend. Sorry. Um, it's next weekend, um, which is the Vampire Bazaar. And it's kind of like a full circle moment for me because this is my this this time last year was my first like event where I like read professionally. Like it was my first like professional psychic event. So it's kind of like a full circle for me. And this event is where I met so many of the friends that I have now. Like this is when I met Cody and Coma and uh, Memento Mori and um, United United Society of Sin. Like I met all of these people at this event and now these people are my friends and then we're doing it all together again on the same, it's just uh, so wonderful. And I've, I, I, I haven't been, into, uh, I haven't done an event in a while since Blasphemy, which was November. So I'm due for an event, so I'm excited. Hell yeah. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, uh, we're going to have so much fun. Um, okay, so first things first, I'll eat your brains. I knew that I was... Ryan was dead. <laughs> I was like, do I that say like, it? Maybe? Yeah. I was like, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted Ryan to do it. I, I really wanted Ryan. But anyways, um, so first things first, I want to talk about um, the first, the, one of the reasons why I wanted Adrian on the show is um, for many reasons. Uh, the topic that we're, we have today is going to be a very exciting topic and something that I think is also really important. And we're going to go into why that's important in a second. But also, Adrian was the person that we commissioned to create the artwork that you see. That you see is now our logo. That you see everywhere now. It's on our Instagram. It is the main. Um, it is the main show art artwork that you see like on apple podcast that logo with the stigmata with the hand and the rosary and the two vaginal roses in the background that was mm -hmm. adrian and also uh, i'm gonna cut you off a quick shout out to vogo for finally getting us on apple podcast just uh that took forever ah. and a day and now now we're here okay i that also <laughs> what you just said implied that i was responsible for getting us on apple podcast i was the one who figured it out First of all, because Rye was supposed to be getting us on all the podcasts for the better part of a year. I figured out in one in one day. One day I figured it wasn't, but to in your defense, that was a pain in the fucking ass. I can't believe it 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 took that much energy and those many steps and how convoluted it is. Like, but I figured it out. And now we are we are on Apple Podcasts, and I'm very excited to say that. Yay. Now we are on all major platforms. Um but yes, um, you're welcome. But also, thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much for <laughs> for for trying. But also, thank you, Voga, for actually figuring it out. <laughs> but anyways, um, producing podcasts it takes it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of figuring things out. So, and I'm I'm happy that Ryan is with me to figure it out with me. Um, so yeah, Adrian is an incredible artist. They are based here in Los Angeles and um, they were the one, they, are, they, they were the one artist I thought in my brain when I wanted to commission someone to make that work of art. So Adrian, can you just like tell us about that? That I mean, we told you what we wanted, but what, what, um, what happened in your brain and how did that like translate onto the paper? And because mind you, that work of art that you see is paper, that is, what is it? Pencil? Pencil on paper? That yeah. is not digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all color pencil. <laughs> yeah. So how did you, how did you come up with that design? Um, it was, I mean, there wasn't too much to like improvise on or to like, um, 
the the image that you took first of all i don't even remember like the specifics of the conversation that we had but i just remember when you asked me i was immediately like yes yes i'll do it like i don't i no questions <laughs> asked i'll fucking do it um usually i don't take commission work because um if i don't want to do the image if i don't want to sit down and draw it then i'm just not going to do it i'm not going to have fun doing it i'm not going to you know um i'm not going to love what i do and so immediately I was like you know what this is I love Boga I love y'all's podcast I listen to every single episode like I'm sitting over here like a big ass fan and I'm like I can't believe that I'm on the show finally <laughs> so oh, that's I was so like sweet. oh my god a chance to like immortalize my my work with y'all's podcast that's I mean that's the reason that I took it and the, the process of doing it I mean I feel like y'all gave me a really good like idea of what to do to the point where it was like when Boga was describing to me what she wanted, I just immediately saw it in my head. So there aren't that many projects that I um, that I get to sit down and I see it in my head and it comes out that way on paper. But this is one of those where it came out exactly the way that I saw it in my head. I, I'm really hoping that it came out the way that y'all saw it in your head. Um, <laughs> Oh, but, no, it came out um, way better. It was way really fun. Better. It was a really fun piece. Thank you. You brought the vision to life. Like, it's exactly what I was picturing when when Vogue and I were, you know, discussing the the template for it. Well, shout out to Rai, because that was Rai's idea. The The idea of the hand and the, and the, and the rosary, that was all Rai's idea. But, like, I wanted, what I wanted was more of, like, a darker aesthetic. So I wanted the reds. I wanted the blacks. I wanted the whites. You know what I mean? So I wanted it to be much more just darker and just just more so much more queer and mm -hmm. i didn't know who else to ask but a queer satanist ah. and and also someone who is also a person of color yeah so i think that's a really good segue into what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> um adrian is actually is is a practicing satanist they practice satanism um which is i don't know if the terms are correct um and I think it's important for folks to um, use the correct words um, when it comes to someone's spiritual practice. And the reason, the reason why I wanted to invite personally Adrian into this podcast is because we are a folk Catholic um, podcast. We are, in essence, a religious podcast. Even though I don't really like the word religion for different reasons. Um, I think it's important to also be aware of how other people practice, and I think just um knowing that people exist is not enough i think understanding how people practice is really important because that you know that diminishes and reduces the risk of misunderstanding or miscommunications um because something that's really important um that that i've been talking about for months now is the fact that i that some of my closest friends are um you know, work with infernal spirits. And I don't. I'm very much the opposite of that. And we coexist in absolute peace. And we thrive when we coexist, honestly. The the most creative and most incredible ideas come from when we sit, we commune together, and we just talk. Um, so that's the reason why I wanted to bring the topic of Satanism in, onto the podcast, because I think it's also really important for our audience to not, I don't want anyone to like, fall into the trap of being in like some sort of echo chamber where it's just folk catholicism and saints and mary and jesus and god because i don't think that's fair i think it's really important for us to really talk about as many practices as possible just so we have some sort of understanding of each other so that i mean I, i've been posting this online you walk into a bar and you meet in satanist how are you gonna what are the what's the first question you're gonna ask them how are you gonna commute how are you gonna communicate effectively with them you know they're, 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 mm -hmm. that's, that could be the beginning of a beautiful relationship so rye what do you think yeah no i'm i'm really super happy and stoked to have you here Adrian, because i really think that meeting people with different theological views beliefs religion spiritualities whatever it may be it's just so important even if we don't adopt those ourselves into our practice i think it's just so uh integral to understanding ourselves and the world better through the lens of other people and getting to get to see the the world through someone else's lens is just so it's so beautiful and important and just contribute to like uh our individuality because then it it Further, further, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
it gives us a foundation to work with and and also see our beliefs through, but also see everything through a new lens. And so I'm super stoked to have you here and talk about Satanism because I know jack shit about it. So we have a bunch of questions <laughs> to ask you. And we're so, yeah, I'm just so excited for everything that you have to offer. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's get the question started. Adrian, I think the first question I think is probably the most obvious question is what is Satanism? What does that mean? Um, so Satanism, um, to myself and to several others, to my knowledge, um, Satanism has actually always been more of a philosophy than a religion. So it isn't necessarily a, you know, a, a book of rules and a congregation and, uh, you know, you have to live this way in order to, you know, it's more of a philosophy in which, um, it's all about the exaltation of the self. So you believe that you are sort of a, a microcosm of the macrocosm. I am the universe itself. I am all of the power that I ever will need um, to get myself to succeed. And so along with, um, with those ideas is also um, uh, a very big um, sort of like accountability and taking responsibility for, for all of your actions. So say if I... Um, if I'm succeeding in my life, I, I'm not going to thank God. I'm going to thank myself and the people that got myself there. And if I start to fail in my life and I take to the streets and I do heroin or something, it's not because the devil made me do it. It's because I got myself there, you know? So um, <clears throat> I think that Satanism is sort of like an umbrella term. Um, a lot of different people fall into it. Um, and one of my favorite things to say is that you don't necessarily convert to becoming Satanist. You sort of find out that you are one. So you start to learn the values and the morals of this philosophy and you're kind of like, at least for myself, I, I was around like 18 when I started really learning about Satanism. And I was like, you know what? That's so crazy. There's finally like this, like a word for someone who's like me, you know, someone who um, has these morals and values and doesn't necessarily align myself with uh, with the faith that I was raised in. So um, most of the time, I think that a Satanist is going to be somebody who was raised uh, with the belief of like um, somebody who was was made to fear Satan and made to fear, you know, going to hell and all of that as sort of like a fear tactic, like a manipulative tool. So it, with age, you start to kind of demystify that and you start to realize, you know what, I'm not going to go to hell. There isn't, you know, it, 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 all of this is sort of propaganda. And so um, long-winded answer was how I became evil. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Well, I mean, what is evil really? But at the same right? time, it's like, I also understand what you're talking about because she really is an evil cunt, this one. <laughs> um. <laughs> and that's what we, we, we've we've talked about that a lot you and i boga is um that we share a lot of similar beliefs we share a lot of similar um values and morals and it, it's almost like we're we're sort of like two different sides of the same coin um i don't doubt that we grew up very similar that we had very similar upbringings um I think that we just both went in like two completely separate avenues. <laughs> like, right. you know, we're, we're literally the opposite sides of the coin. So um, we understand each other really well. And I think that's why we get along so well, so harmoniously, because we um, we understand each other and our beliefs. Well, also at the same time, it's I the reason why is because I ask questions when I don't understand. And also mm -hmm. at the same time, regardless of whether I don't understand or not, doesn't negate the fact that I respect you. Um, and respect, I mean, that's just, you know, inherent respect is just something that everyone should carry with them. Like ha having a respect for a human being who might have, who might look different or walk a different path or just have a different, you know, outlook on life is something that everyone should just carry with them regardless until that person proves that you don't, you know, they don't deserve that. Then, you know, why, exactly. you know, why, why are you, why are you carrying that with you, you know? Um, no, exactly, I want to ask, yeah. I've heard, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Go, go ahead. Uh, I've just heard different terms like, like theistic Satanism or atheistic or just, just different branches, or like you said, it's an mm -hmm. umbrella term. So I'm curious, like, do you have a specific kind of term that you or label that you use? And if so, like, uh, you know, what does that mean in general and, and for you? And, and if you have any information on those other kind of, uh, branches of Satanism, maybe uh, sharing that with us to give us who like, 
me, for example, knows nothing about it, a little more background of what that is and what it means? Yeah, so um, so obviously the, 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 the two terms, uh, theistic Satanist and the non-theistic Satanist, a theistic Satanist being somebody who does believe in the um, overall presence and um, energetic force that would be labeled as Satan, and then uh, 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 non-theistic Satanist being somebody who doesn't really believe in a in sort of a supernatural um, entity. I'm at this really weird like crossroads between the two because I started off not believing in like an overall like entity of Satan or or too much into the supernatural, but I do practice witchcraft on my own. So I, the the term that I used to describe myself would be a satanic witch, and I practice satanic witchcraft. Um, basically that being, uh, witchcraft to me is the, the ability to manipulate energy here in this physical world, in this, in this physical earthly plane. And so my form of witchcraft is one that will carry out my will and, and sort of satisfy my own selfish and carnal needs on this, on this plane. So that's kind of what makes it satanic for me. Um, when it comes to, uh, uh, theistic Satanism, um, I don't, necessarily believe in the same I, I think that the common misconception is that people think that I believe in like the Satan from like the Bible and it's like I like you know uh, another big common misconception would be that Satanism is like the direct opposite of Christianity that it's kind of like hate everybody and you know um, be awful be evil do evil acts every day and it's not it's not really that it's um, like I said earlier it's all about an exaltation of the self and so I think that people who start to come around to Satanism, it's because they already inherently um, share those same values of like individuality, um, free will, uh, uh, free bodily autonomy and stuff like that. So um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you, no, you much, answered you, it. You answered it. Yeah. Yeah, you answered it. The the interesting part of it that I the the part that I really really gravitate to, or the philo the philosophy that I really gravitate to is what you what you mentioned the exaltation of of the self. How you kind of create like an altar within yourself. Like you are you become your own altar. You become your own being that is worthy of of of, of worship and reverence. Um, which is something that I've adopted, um, especially from from meeting you. Um, the transformation that happens when you start to not just love yourself but worship yourself is absolutely it's it the impact of of that mindset is so it's extremely cathartic, but also at the same time it's extremely empowering um, because like we talk about like how we harness power or we harness magic in you know working with spirits you know working with 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 plant allies working with saints working with you know this that or the other um but a part of that a par part of the, the 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 power that we harness is knowing that we're able to do those things right knowing that we have the the knowledge and the insight and the intuition to be able to tap into that part of the universe or tap into that part of of um the way the world works right and i don't want to like start going into like tap into like energy or you know vibes the or whatever i don't want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like there there is there is there is truth in all of that in saying like being able to worship yourself in the sense that you are a spirit and a being and a um um, a thing that is 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 worthy of that kind of worship um, is is extremely impactful, and it's something that I think I carry with me, um, because you know partly because of you, um, of the things that you taught me in regards to um, why that's important and how like most Satanists find um, the the most important holiday of the year to a Satanist is their birthday, their right? birthday, um, yeah. which is which is absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a really really um, it's an enticing philosophy 
It's a very enticing mm-hmm. philosophy that I feel like you don't. I don't necessarily think that you have to be a Satanist to adopt that philosophy. I think oh, it's yeah, a. No. Yeah, 100%. I think it's a philosophy that everyone should carry with them. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I think that a lot of. Um, uh, I I grew up Catholic myself, so in a very strict like Hispanic Catholic household, and so. I think that the idea of like um, sort of that, you know, the the phrase like Catholic guilt or like Catholic shame, uh, that was always a thing with me. So um, I think around my teen years is when I started kind of really like rebelling against the whole idea. I mean, I I grew up doing all of my sacraments. I did all of the, I went to catechism, I went to Sunday school, all that. Um, And it just came to a point where I was really conflicted because I didn't feel like I fit with this group of people. I didn't feel like I fit within this like uh, belief. Um, I always, always felt myself be more called by like the darker, the more, you know, occult, witchcraft, things like that. And um, at first I, I always like to say that once you start to, every Satanist kind of goes through like these like steps of like coming out. You get me? Like the first step is kind of like you renounce the old faith. And then the next step is kind of like, oh, well, I'm an atheist. And then the next step is like, I'm getting really into uh, uh, theology and I'm getting really into philosophy. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I found Satanism. I'm a Satanist, you know? So <laughs> it's like you you find your way to it. And then you, you learn that um, Satanism is all about individuality it's all about exaltation of the self it's you, you know like i like we said the most important satanic holiday is your birthday um and especially one of the biggest um parts of being a satanist is worshiping yourself is is exalting yourself and putting yourself on a pedestal and knowing that you're you deserve everything that you want you um will do everything in your power to get what you want and nothing will stop you um i actually have right here next to me um i have an altar to myself so I have, it's, uh, it's a drawing that I made of myself that's supposed to be um, uh, sort of symbolically a rendition of what I'm going to look like when I, when I get to hell. Um, so it's me holding a sword. It's like a flaming sword. I have a whole headdress on. The frame of the picture is completely covered in like uh, black leaves and thorns and things like that. I have my candles. I have my cauldron in front of it. So this is my main altar that I actually work with. And um, it is myself. I do see that as sort of my like ultimate form. So I'm kind of calling upon myself to help myself when I perform my witchcraft, if that makes sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. <laughs> I, I love the idea of a, of a uh, altar for the self. I. I just had an email from something I completely forgot I was sus- subscribed to talking about creating like a self-love altar for Valentine's Day but just the idea of a year-round altar just for the self and honoring the self it just gave me this wonderful idea that I want to now act on and implement for myself because I think that's so important to to acknowledge yeah. and exalt oneself and and that's what I was speaking to earlier of like it's so beautiful to see through your lens Adrian and then like compare it to kind of like my theological view because uh, I agree with that, the exaltation of the self, and then just through my lens, through through someone who is full Catholic, like the the exaltation of myself is more so like the exaltation of like the God in me or like the Christ yeah. self, and 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 worshiping of that versus just worshiping, um, you know, not really aligning oneself with anything specific and just kind of exalting the self as, as a as a whole or as a person. Um, and so that right there, just like kind of uh, seeing how views align and differ, and it's just. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Well, at the same time, like it, it kind of goes into that idea, like when we talk about like Genesis, where you know, um, <laughs> I like to call it the myth of Genesis, um, the myth of Genesis, <laughs> where um, you know, God said, "I'm," you know, they or they, he made man in his in his own image, right? So the mm, idea mm-hmm. that you know the Holy Spirit or God or any sort of or source is a part of who we are inherently because of what that story talks about right we are imbued with that spirit in some way or another so it wouldn't make sense for us to not to exalt ourselves because we are in some way god (laughs) because we were made in their image right we were Mm -hmm. made in the in the image of the holy spirit we were made in the image of whatever that may be right so we do have that sort of inherent power or that inherent essence right that Mm -hmm. primordial spiritual essence of um of our souls right so you know it kind of like ties into that where you know i think just satanism is much more more brazen about it you know a lot more 
you know, to the point to where it's okay to be arrogant, <laughs> you know, I mean, to an extent, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, there's, there's, there's a, there's a sense of, um, um, self empowerment and self just, um, just self gassing yourself up and that's totally fucking okay. Um, I think something that I also want to kind of talk about is, um, just personally, just for you, um, if you could get like compare and contrast, I know that you kind of went into it a little bit with your like childhood, how you were brought up Catholic. If you can like compare and contrast your life before and after, I know that you said that like you kind of gradually, you know, come out or you trying to, you, you gradually figure out that you are a Satanist. But if like you could put a line, you could put like a, there's like a, a, a time where you really saw that transition from your old life into who you are now. How would that compare? How would that contrast to each other? Um, I think the biggest thing is that I wasn't out as a as a Catholic. I wasn't openly gay or, or you know comfortable being myself really as a as you know a young Catholic. Um, yeah, there was a lot of shame. There was a lot of self hatred. A lot of you know I'm not um, I'm not the person who. Uh, who my family wants to see me be. I'm not, you know, uh, measuring up to these ideas. Um, and uh, obviously the biggest thing is that I'm denying myself uh, the ability of being able to come out and, and comfortably be myself. And so um, with Satanism, I, I definitely feel that I love myself so much. I exalt myself. I uh, am, you know, I just feel like I, I'm finally living as the person that I was meant to be. That's how I feel. I feel like I finally have absolutely no reservations as to who I am. I don't feel like I need to tailor myself for anybody. Um, I am very comfortable in my skin. And I think that that's the biggest thing is that I feel so empowered by myself. And it's kind of crazy because it's like, damn, I could have been empowering myself this whole time. You know, like I, I, I'm over here finding out that really it, it's it's all just me, and it, there's a certain comfort with sort of um, releasing the ideas of the of you know the the overall uh, God controlling everything and and sort of accepting that you are the one that's making your own path. You know, there's there's a certain level of comfort there because. I think that the hardest thing for people when it comes to questioning their their beliefs is that um, people sort of really, their whole entire reality um, is based off of this belief. So to challenge the belief is to challenge their whole reality, you know, and, mm. and that's really hard for people. And so it was really hard for me as well um, in this time of like questioning, like, what do I really believe in? What's going on? What's the greater scheme of things? So like I said, the steps of like, you know, first I'm an atheist, then I'm getting into philosophy and then this and then that. Um, there was a point where I was just like, you know what, there's, there's, it, it's all just chaos and flux. And every belief that we have is simply a, a interpretation of the chaos and flux going around us. And none of us really have the right answer. We're all just kind of making it up as we go along, which I mean, I still think is, is, you know, going on, but um where I've come to in my beliefs, I think that I have found a place where I definitely do believe more in the in the spiritual and supernatural, the the world around us, sort of the 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 world around us that we can't really see. Um, and I don't know. I think Satanism has definitely given me such a strong sense of empowerment, and I love it. I love it. I feel so comfortable in my own skin. <laughs> mm. I love that. And you should see her. You should see her at, at events. Ooh, she owns the room. Listen, she tries. She tries. She tries. She tries. <laughs> I mean, if, if me and Francisco are in the room, she doesn't have, she, there's no contest. But when she's doing an <laughs> event by herself, she's doing, she's, she's doing it. She's, she's, she oh, yeah. really does own the room. She's the only she one in the room. It. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you should see her too, because she has like this whole, like, devil booth it is mm -hmm. so it's like this i always tell you it's it, it always reminds me of like those like 1940s like you know like f or like not even 1940s like the film noir you know era like what is that like 1930s 1920s right it's yeah like, 
those like carnival like you know traveling carnival kind of oh gosh it's so good it's like an ah. evil carnival kind of oh god it's it's such a good aesthetic and yeah thank you, do, you you do and then also to witness one of your your black masses yes. which is absolutely incredible it is an incredibly powerful experience to actually see one of those and you know you know witness one of them they're very the the energy in the room is electrifying and i am not <laughs> this you might feel uncomfortable when i say this but it is something that is close to how people feel when they go to mass it's the same kind of oh it's yeah the same it, it is kind of you know it's the um the amp you know it's getting people amped up it's the it's the it's the congregation of, of folks who believe the same thing who see the same philosophy um and um the 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 validation and the the ability to show people that you are seen here you know it was a very powerful experience too and i cannot wait for the next one could you share a little bit about that adrian like what exactly is a black mass what does that look like as much as you're comfortable and willing to share yeah 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 um, so a black mass for me uh, starts off, the, the idea is supposed to be sort of a perversion of the um, Catholic mass. So it's sort of uh, the uh, high priest or the celebrant comes in, uh, sort of addresses the whole congregation with the sign of the horns, and then begins an invocation to Satan. And so after the invocation, we call out the four demonic names of the four princes of hell or the uh, any four infernals that we're trying to call forth to help us with the sort of the intention of the black mass. And so I think that the purpose of it is to is to rile up and build up so much energy in the room that we're able to direct all of our energy collectively into our mission. So um, our the previous black mass that I just did was the one at blasphemy. Um, which was back in November. And the, the purpose and the point of that one was to basically destroy homophobia, destroy transphobia, destroy oppression and shame. Um, and not necessarily on like this like global level of like we're doing this black mass and then tomorrow all of a sudden racism is gone. You get me? It's like, it's more, mm -hmm. um, it's more repeating these affirmations and these vows to actively go out like after this black mass is done, you will go out into the world and carry these values with you to the point where you will be actively destroying homophobia and transphobia and racism wherever you see it. You get me? So it's kind of affirming your stance against um, certain things that are like oppressive or bigoted or prejudiced. Um, and yeah, like Voga said, it's electrifying. It's honestly, I lose myself in it. So I, I um, it's definitely a very big performance and, and with Satanism, as well as with a lot of other religions and beliefs, um, there's so much, there's a there's a very, very big, rich, like theatricalness to it. You get me? Mm -hmm. Like it's very much uh, the pageantry and the, you know, performance of it all. So um, I, I also have to give a really quick little shout out to my organist. Her name is Harley Greenhouse. Harley. Yes, love Harley her. is the coolest person in the world. That she is my organist. Um, she plays like a live organ as we're doing the whole Black Mass, and it just adds like uh, like I couldn't have done it without her because her music just adds this like whole new level of like it takes it up a notch. It and truly, coolest, it truly does. Yeah, it's, it's like listening to a, a fucking choir in mass. Like it's, yeah. it's like the same. It's the same idea and. I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, I also have to give out a shout out to Harley because Harley is also one of my clients. <laughs> so I actually have a Oh yeah, I hope she's, she's, she's going to be listening to this. Oh, for sure. I know she is. I know she is. I told her too, in my last appointment with her, I told her, I was like, oh, I'm having Adrian on. She's like, oh my yeah. God, I'm so excited. Um, I actually also turned her on to the podcast and she was she was very excited to listen to it. Um, but yes, the the organs, they, they truly make the it feels like it transports you into a different place yeah exactly it really does yeah where do you host these black masses so our first and only one so far <laughs> was that blasphemy in november and so our next one is actually going to be at the next blasphemy which um if this airs in march will still give people time to prepare for the next one so it will yes this is going to be coming out before blasphemy yes so blasphemy is going to be 
May 27th and May 28th. And we are actually going to be performing the Black Mass on both nights. So at the end, at the end of each night, um, you can we can all congregate into the biggest room inside of the studio. And that's where we will be holding um, Black Mass with all of the vendors and anybody who wants to attend. It's completely free. Um, you know, if you want to come and watch and anybody listening that in L.A. that wants to come and watch, it'll be it's going to be fucking rad. I was just checking my calendar. I think I can come through that weekend. <gasps> please do. Oh my God. Please, please do. Please do. Please do. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm going to, I'm just going to do a really quick plug. I know. I mean, this, this, we're just talking. We're just, we're just Tiki. And I'm going to do a really quick plug in regards to blasphemy only because not only because the people who run it are some of my closest friends, like Adrian and I are actually part of the committee that actually is in charge of getting blasphemy like up and going because we got so close to the folks who actually run blasphemy. Blasphemy is not just a market. It truly isn't. The reason why blasphemy is so distinct and different from other markets that you see out in LA or anywhere is that blasphemy is also a ritual from the from the beginning of the of the of last week there is an opening ritual that cody actually does on friday the day before blast meet starts which is basically also like a little social where people can come and talk to like vendors and it's 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 this whole thing where he does like a, a whole opening ritual and also this year the public is invited to come to to the ritual i think right is that true adrian um, I think, I think that, they're able to buy tickets to the ritual, to yeah. the opening ritual. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that there's going to be um, some more performances as well on on the night of the, we call it like the sinner social. So, yeah, love so that. it's, I, I know, I fucking love it. I, there, a whole other tangent at the last one they did, um, what was the performance they were doing? It was a BDSM. It was a girl. She it was, was like, Angie, right? It was Angie doing. It was Angie too. Angie was doing like a bloodletting thing with Travis, where they she was like sticking needles in him. But there was another performance where it was, uh, and I'm so sorry that I don't know her name, but she was a dominatrix dressed up as a nun, and she had a whip, and she had her submissive like bent over one of those like horse things, and she put a bunch of like clothes pins like all up and down her ass cheeks <laughs> so, <laughs> with the whip she was like whipping she was whipping each and every like clothespin off of her ass and the funniest thing this is the tangent part the funniest thing is that when we did the our christmas party um creepy sweets did a bunch of cupcakes with a bunch of like pictures from blasphemy weekend and one of them was a picture of me and my partner joaquin um like both of us like smiling like ear to ear yeah yeah, and yeah. it was just a picture of the two of us like smiling and like it was just so funny that was and my favorite fun. one yeah and it's just funny to me because like it's a picture of us but looking at that picture i know what we're watching you know like we're like super into watching this girl get her like clothes pins whipped off of her ass cheeks it was really cool no but there's I, I know that they definitely plan on doing a few more performances on Friday night. I think it's going to be a ticketed event for anybody who's not a vendor. But um, Blasphemy Weekend itself, Saturday and Sunday, is completely free to come to. Um, there is going to be so many fucking cool vendors. It's it's the, the best of the infernal here in Los Angeles. <laughs> I agree. And for anyone who isn't uh, a patron, um, I implore you to become a patron because in the post show, I want to talk about the community, what what community means, and also um, the community of, of vendors that I think that's a really interesting topic that we could talk to in the post show. But anyways, um, yeah, so Blasphemy is a ritual. There's an opening ceremony. Um, Adrian per, per, uh, per, um, does a black mass, which is absolutely incredible. It is not just a bunch of people getting together trying to sell wares, even though that's a big part of it. Um, it is it, it it is it is rooted in community in the in the community that we have here but anyways yeah um adrian i know earlier you're kind of talking about misconceptions that you are encountering coming into satanism and i was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to that of of some more maybe talking points that you usually feel like you have to debunk when you're telling someone like hey i'm a satanist or just things that people tend to have misconceptions of of the of the belief system of the philosophy yeah so um Usually when I tell people that I'm a Satanist, they'll give me this like, like, you know, like their eyes will get like really big. Like they're like, oh, you know, they think that 
I think that they think that I'm out here like sacrificing babies and goats and I'm uh, like somehow part of the Illuminati as well and all that and you know the, all these conspiracy theories um, some of them true some of them are true you know, <laughs> the occasional goat here and there <laughs> the occasional baby <laughs> the occasional virgin you know it's, it's so cool <laughs> and if you can't find it, yeah, and if you don't have a, a baby to bloodlet, store bought is fine. Store bought is fine, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, definitely. People, people, sort of. When you hear Satanist, you're. I think that your mind goes to like the extreme at first, um, especially because. So actually, the term Satanist was for centuries and centuries and centuries used as sort of a negative, as a, as a, um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? It was used as sort of like a, a slander against anybody who didn't fall within the, you know, the, um, all the rules and regulations of of Christianity or Catholicism or, or the different sects of Christianity is that, um, if you didn't, you know, follow the rules, if you weren't, uh, you know, upholding the the mission and the values of the church then you were a devil worshiper you were a satanist you were a witch oh my god right did you know that you're a devil worshiper (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah i'd be riding the devil's dick every sunday night oh Oh, no oh Oh, my goodness who knew who knew it was such a satanist (laughs) don't make me sing Um, (laughs) don't make me sing (laughs) if you know you know if you know you know um no, but yeah, I think that people's minds go to the extreme. So it, it literally, I don't think was until about the 1960s. I, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Anton LaVey in this entire yeah. conversation, who is sort of the uh, modern day, he, he sort of not created modern day Satanism, but he definitely brought it to the mainstream. So um, Anton LaVey kind of, He's definitely, so one of the common misconceptions about himself is that um, he's actually not really, I don't consider him to be an occultist. I think that Anton LaVey is one of the greatest like showmen ever. You get me? He uh, uh, sort of made it a lot more theatrical and a lot more about aesthetics and a lot more about, you know, the philosophy and, and. um, Would you, would you say that it was more political than anything else? A little bit, yeah. It, it's definitely a product of its time. I know that, you know, in the 60s, so many things are, go- are you know, left and right going on. It, the the sexual revolution is happening. Um, you know, um, people are becoming more comfortable with uh, with the LGBTQIA community at that time. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a product of its time. But because of that, uh, today, some of the beliefs that are held by the Church of Satan are a little outdated. So there's definitely um, sort of like these like misogynistic overtones when it comes to uh, Anton LaVey's belief on the satanic witch, which is that he sort of states and that he, he actually wrote a book called The Satanic Witch, where he's talking about, uh, you know, uh, female presenting people or, or female identifying people, how basically like you're not in any of these specific words, but it basically kind of gives off this idea of like your only power is through like your sexuality. Like, you know, being being hot and sexy and like enticing people is the only way that you're gonna get what you want. And it kind of, that's kind of what it's like trying to teach, which- um, This is also kind of true. Kind of true. It is, it is to a point. <laughs> it is to a, to a certain point, but, um, but today, it, just, just reading it over again in today's context, it doesn't really come off the, you know... The, the way the it's way. supposed to. Yeah. So, um, no, I definitely do believe in using your, your looks and um, using a glamour to kind of get what you want. Um, oh, absolutely. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that the the common misconception about Satanism is that I, I sacrifice babies and goats and virgins and I, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> You hear it, you you heard it here, folks. Adrian you heard it here. Sacrifice right. goats and babies, <laughs> and virgins, especially the virgins. Leave especially the virgins. The virgins. Alone. They they've got it tough already. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> 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 um. So um. Kind of going into that because I know that you mentioned like Anton Lavey. I know that there are different kind of branches of Satanism. Can you kind of mm-hmm. um expand on different kinds of Satanism? Like, what does that look like? Like, I know that there are different churches. I know that there is like the church of Satan and also the satanic temple. So 
could you maybe expand? Is there like a difference in theology? Is there a difference in philosophy? How do, how do they differ? Um, I think that the, so the, the Church of Satan, which is the one that Anton LaVey created in the 60s and, and still exists today, is definitely more of a, of, of sort of the idea that I was talking about before, like this umbrella term of what a Satanist is. You kind of adopt this philosophy and you can kind of run in, in any direction you so please with this philosophy. You can do whatever you want. Um, therefore, you can be a, a practicing witch as a Satanist. You could be, uh, you know, believe in a theistic Satan and all of that. And the Satanic Temple, which came up around, I think, the, the early 2010s, um, is definitely more of a political organization. Um, it's, I think for lack of a better word, it's like a boogeyman to, to a lot of other religious organizations that try to, um, uh, uh, sneak their way in and start to influence the laws in the United States. So, uh, it's, it's sort of the idea of like, if you're going to justify certain laws with religious beliefs, then you need to include all religions. And so if you're going to include all religions, then you've got to include Satanism in there too. And it, Satanism being all, you know, spooky and goth and, and scary and, oh, Satan, nobody wants to really give in to that. No one wants to give the satisfaction of like, you know, it was the whole thing about the, um, the Ten Commandments um, statue that they were putting outside of the uh, Oklahoma Capitol. And um, right. yeah, and so the Church of Satan came up and was like, well, if you're going to put a Ten Commandments statue, then we should be able to put a Baphomet statue right next to it. If you're going to include one religion, you've got to include all of them. And so the church or the, the satanic temple definitely exists as a major political organization. It also doesn't recognize the existence of any kind of um, theistic Satanism. So literally I, um, the, uh, the Southern California chapter of the satanic temple isn't really like a place. It's more of like a Facebook group. And so when I first joined the Facebook group, one of the questions is like, do you believe in an actual Satan? And if you put yes, then you're like denied from the group. Like they don't want basically people who are sort of going to give um, the impression uh, that they're kind of like kooks or something. You get me? Like, like, by oh, mm-hmm. so, yeah. so no UPG, basically. It's yeah. UPG. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's why I like to say, so a lot of people, they usually ask me when they come up to my booth, when they, when I'm working at markets and you know it's a big old devil head and i i'm obviously a satanist so they'll ask me are you um affiliated with the church of satan or the satanic temple or whatever and i i always say that we're not i'm not affiliated with any other satanic organization besides my own business i'm sort of creating my own little branch of satanism with my business sort of like a queer satanic um sort of supposed to um I think that being queer and being Satanist really go hand in hand. So I would love to start to like see this community of queer Satanists blossom, basically where Satanism helps you come into your queerness. Um, so that's like my little branch of Satanism. <laughs> I love that. I love, so uh, it sounds like like Satanism has really had a, a really great positive empowering impact on, on your identity and journey with identity in, in multiple ways, including queerness. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think that it, if it wasn't for um, myself finding Satanism, I wouldn't be so like unapologetically queer. You get me? And I, 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 I that being unapologetically queer is not specific to Satanism. You know, you can find yourself and you can feel, you know, feel all of your oats without having to actually believe in anything or have, you know, a, a philosophy or anything like that. But um, it definitely was a really, really strong and powerful tool for me to embrace sort of the uh the the things that i was told were like wrong about myself you get me like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm able to sit here and embrace that i'm gay and i i'm into this and i'm into that or i you know and, and not feel bad or, or shame for for existing as who i really am oh absolutely and it sounds like satanism is inherently queer regardless of oh yeah whether, oh yeah 100 percent whatever your gender identity is, who you decide to go to bed with, it, that, that doesn't matter compared if you, if you, I, I, I believe just based on what you're telling me, if you identify as a Satanist, then it's inherently queer in regards yeah. to, or in the context of it being, you know, it's just strange and not, not in the, you know, the realm of what is normal and what is accepted. 
you know, and um, mm-hmm. that's the reason why the philosophies of Satanism um, really does, um, you know, it does, it, it carries a lot of weight, I think. And, you know, going into that, I just want to kind of mention the, the, the t- I know that there, there's a, there's a, I don't want to say a command, like a list of commandments, but there are, there are, there is a list of tenets that um, folks do are, are, are aware of. And it's something that I think that um, we should expand on. I know that, um, you know, it, is there a difference between the tenets of, of, of each church or each organization or, um, and also what are they? Like, what are the, what are these tenets that, that um, Satanists hold? Um, I think that the one for the church of Satan is called the 11 satanic rules of the earth. And it's sort of these, it's, it's in, in either case for either organization, the, the uh, Church of Satan or the Satanic Temple, they're definitely more of like guidelines. I think the ones for the Satanic Temple are a little bit more like, um, not strict, but more specific. Um, but they're also not any kind of like, uh, like, like rules or philosophies that are like really outlandish or out there. You get me? It's basically um, both both organizations very strongly um, are against any kind of abuse of any kind. So there's absolutely no such in, in either organization, there's no such thing as like a, like ritual, satanic ritual abuse. There's no abuse of, of humans or animals or children. Um, any single person that's involved in any kind of ritual or any kind of thing that you're doing, um, consent is very important. Um, I think that the, the, uh, the tenets, of the satanic temple which i think are the seven tenets of the satanic temple are a lot more um geared towards a belief in science so i know that one of the tenets specifically is that our beliefs should conform to our best understanding of of current science i'm not saying Mm -hmm. that it like verbatim it completely but um but it's along those lines you know our our beliefs should conform to our best understanding of science they should never conform to fit out outdated beliefs. Um, there's another one of uh, one's body is subject to one's will alone. So Satanists, we believe that, you know, you could do with your body anything that you want. And so this is the biggest, I think, platform or the biggest tenet that the uh, Satanic Temple um, sort of believes and shares in because obviously right now uh women's autonomy and women's uh bodily reproductive rights are under attack and so um the satanic temple definitely believes that if you want an abortion it is your it is utterly your right to be able to go and do with your body what you want so um i know that the satanic temple recently made uh, uh their own kind of like abortion clinic like organization kind of and they mm-hmm. named it after yeah. they named it after like this like republican senator's mom like Mo- they named yeah her, her his mother yeah yeah <laughs> so um i think that a big uh, one of the like unspoken little traits of like uh, a satanist or, or or satanism is literally trolling so mm-hmm. <laughs> like literally like they will always be there to kind of troll like people at like you know um abortion clinics that are outside picketing or they'll be there to troll you know people that are are just picketing anywhere with their signs and stuff um but um but yeah the i well, let me see the other uh tenets of the satanic temple i think are along the lines of um both both organizations very much believe in um, not really sharing your opinions or your thoughts until you're asked. You know, you kind of don't impose anything until you're asked, and you also don't um, step on anybody else's toes or shoes or anything like that. Um, you don't ever like encroach on somebody else's beliefs. Satanism is is very much not trying to convert or conform anybody to to our beliefs or, or philosophies, um, and it's very much. Uh, treat others the way that you want to be treated and if somebody uh, there's the the famous quote by Anton LaVey which is um, if if someone smacks you on one cheek then you smash them on the other you know it's if somebody encroaches on you that gives you the right to encroach on them so you never ever throw like the first punch you get me if somebody throws a punch at you then you have every right to destroy them that's sort of your you know the, the... really interesting because that sounds like love thy neighbor oh yeah yeah 100 percent hmm. <laughs> hmm interesting actually it's not that interesting it's not that surprising we all know 
We all, we all, we all know. <laughs> so, Agent, obviously, with any philosophy, theology, belief system, there, I feel, is always pros and cons or dangers and things and to be aware of. And I'm curious, are are there anything? Is there anything that you feel are dangers or things that people need to be aware of if they were to want to kind of dip their toes in or start working their way into identifying as a Satanist or embodying Satanist philosophy? Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say that, um, let me see. It's, I think that if, if once, once somebody starts to show an interest or starts to feel attracted to Satanism, I think that they inherently already have these sort of um, values and beliefs within themselves that they believe in and that they, um, you know, live their lives by. So um, this goes into sort of this topic of kind of like what, it, looking at it sort of in a theistic way, what Satan is. Um, I think that if we're recognizing Satan as like a as like a presence or an entity, um, it's kind of important to distinguish sort of the two different like, I guess ideas of what Satan is. So the first one I think would be the sort of like primordial dark current of what Satan was from the beginning of time. I, I very much believe that Satan is like an earthly spirit that is basically the embodiment of humankind's um, carnality and need for indulgence. So um, Satanism very much celebrates um, the carnal, celebrates uh, self-indulgence, absolutely no restraint when it comes to indulging yourself. I think that that's where it could get dangerous. I think that um, indulgence is, is perfectly fine, but I, I, I think that it's up to each individual to sort of uh, find their own like moderation you get me um mm -hmm. so it's oh and the, and the second uh idea of like what satan and of what satan is um would sort of be like the egregore of satan sort of the collective consciousness of like what we all think satan is which is you know i guess collectively we all think that it's like the devil in hell with horns and a pitchfork and all of that um and when you meld these two ideas together, it sort of gives you what like this like idea of Satan is today. Um, so I think that once people start to practice it and start to kind of become unreserved with themselves, it's up to each individual to find their own moderation so that you're not sort of crossing the line. I always like to say that, um, you know, um, indulgence and, and indulging yourself um, What's the word I'm looking for? If restraint usually sometimes leads to compulsion. So if you're really denying yourself something, you know, and you're denying, you're denying, you're denying, one day it's kind of like that rubber band is gonna snap and you're just kind of gonna just go full on into it, whatever it is that you wanna do and you might hurt yourself or others, or, you know, um, you might overindulge. So um, definitely moderation and kind of indulging yourself in little baby steps, you know, and, and, and knowing your own limits and knowing um, the limits of the people around you is definitely really important. So, um, yeah, I think that it's, when embracing the carnal, when embracing your own um, carnality, uh, it's, it's kind of touchy sometimes. I think that's well, what I, I also, would sort of. I just want to, I, this, I don't want to speak for you, but I just want to maybe mention, I think that also if you start identifying yourself as a Satanist and also you, you're openly a Satanist. I think something that you need to be cautious, you have to also be very cautious about is that you're going to get a lot of scrutiny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you better be ready for a lot of arguments. Right. And I think it's also a really good idea for you to, and this is not just within Satanism just itself. I think it's just in any sort of, you know, alternative spiritual practice. I think it's important for you to find the people that you want to surround yourself with who understand you um just so that you have you know you have those people that can you know help hold you up um because you are going to experience like adrian you've told me at events where people like once they, like they see your booth as something more of like maybe like performance art but then when they actually start to talk to you they start to realize oh you actually believe in these things and you know, they become a little bit more apprehensive. So I think something that's really important because you are kind of going 
you know, you're more on the fringes of society, you are going to experience scrutiny, discrimination, um, and prejudice. Um, so being able to understand that and also understand how to deal with that is something that should maybe be incorporated into your growth. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that it, it definitely helps me that I am self-admittedly very (laughs) well-spoken. Like I'm very, uh, good at being able to like debate, um, my beliefs just because I've had to do it for so many years now. (laughs) So, uh, it's crazy though, because going into my business when I first started this and I, I made the stand and, you know, I knew exactly the, the kind of business that I wanted to do. Um, I was very, very ready with like a whole tool belt of like debate topics and, you know, facts and knowledge and, and information and stuff like that for whenever somebody comes up to me and starts arguing with me. But it's crazy. Luckily enough, I've never actually had to deal with somebody coming up to me being like, you're going to go to hell. And, this, you know, like I've never had to deal with somebody getting all crazy on me. Um, That's just for me. That's only coming from me. Yeah, it's only <laughs> Voga. Every time she comes up to the stand and she tells me I smell like sulfur. It's only that. It's only those times. Um, uh, verbatim. But, those are my words. Yeah, literally verbatim. Like, I'll, I I won't even see Voga. I'll hear her voice from a distance. Like, ugh, it smells like sulfur. And I just know it's her. I'm like, oh. I get so excited. My voice does carry. It I have does. one of those voices that can bend steel. So I understand oh, yeah. what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, but I was so ready to, to, like, debate people left and right. And luckily every market that we've done we've been very like warmly embraced by everybody i think that um the people who it's not meant for they just sort of like steer clear of it they don't really come up to us or talk to us um but for the most part a lot of people are super into it a lot of people see the stand they see the artwork they see you know um myself selling my stuff and and doing satanic baptisms and it's supposed to make you happy you get me like the whole image of it the whole performance of everything it's supposed to kind of like tickle your funny bone and and make you feel kind of like you're in like a like a crazy movie or something you get me (laughs) well i want to expand on that because when people come to your booth you offer free satanic baptisms yes so the satanic baptism that i offer at my booth is in it's in I, I, I guess to, to each individual, it, it could vary, but the way that I perform it, it's not necessarily a, you know, actual like ritual, spiritual right. thing. It's a lot more of a cathartic performance. So it allows the person who is being baptized to sort of very loudly proclaim these affirmations that we, um, that we identify with as, as our satanic business, as our coven which are to um, reject racism, reject ignorance, reject homophobia and patriarchy. And then we get to scream Hail Satan at the top of our lungs, which you never hear anywhere. Imagine you're at the grocery store and you just hear somebody screaming Hail Satan. Like, (laughs) you get me like, so like when you're at an event and you hear that really loud, it it not only creates a lot of attention, but the person screaming it is, it's a very cathartic release. Of, of inhibition and, and things like that. And especially topped with like, we have a like this really giant gong next to our stand. And I always let the initiate bang the gong themselves. I always tell them, you know, give it a good bang. She could take a good banging. You don't have to be scared of, you know, whacking it real hard. So just like her mother, just like her mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after we scream Hail Satan, they'll go ahead and bang the gong as hard as they can. And then I have a chalice on my stand full of blood. And so I'll dip my fingers in it and put a little inverted cross on people's foreheads as a sign of their newfound freedom and and being inhibitionless. <laughs> so it's definitely a very cathartic release. That's what it's supposed to be. That is so sick. Anytime I hear the word inhibition, I'm just like, feel the rain on your skin. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Who is that? Is that Sarah? What is that? Uh, is it Colby Calais? No. We're bad gays right now. Oh my god. I know. Well, not the early two thousands. No, we need to stop. <laughs> She's Rye, your gay is showing. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Put it away. Well, this has been an incredibly lightning conversation. Adrian, thank you so much for being with us. It is, I am I am so elated to have not just 
one of my closest friends on the podcast, but someone who can enlighten us on, uh, you know, you know, something that has been a controversial topic for decades now. Um, and I think it's really, your insight is very, very important. And, um, you know, I know that you don't speak for all Satanists, but I think your perspective is also very important. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy that um, you join us today. I would really implore everyone, if you are not yet, join our Patreon because we are about to start the post show and we're going to just be kikiing and just being gross. Um, <laughs> and we're just going to be talking, talking. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being with us. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank time. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What the hell? I've been so, I've been excited about this since last year, August, when you first told me. We were at a party, <laughs> we were at a friend's birthday party. Yeah. And we were like tucked away in the corner, like in the smoking zone. And Voga like <laughs> scoots up next to me and is like, so I've been thinking about you being on our podcast. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Like, uh, like at that point I had already been listening to like all the episodes that were currently out. And so when you asked me, I was like, oh my God, no fucking way. I just, uh, and I've been so excited about this literally since then. Like I've been looking forward to this day, this hour for the past however many months it's been since August. And to make the the logo, the cover art, I'm like, wow, I'm so. Honored. I know you're all over this fucking <laughs> podcast now. You just, you just, you just, you just planted your seed everywhere. She's, she's just spreading her juices all over the place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, thank you guys so much for everything. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for all the work you do and the the art that you've made for us. I just can't get over the beauty of it and part of you is immortalized with us for forever now so hell yeah thank you thank you so on on the internets um adrian please plug everything that you possibly can um please do every everything everything that you're offering everything just do it just go yeah so um you can go ahead and follow me on instagram at witches and devils um, that is our uh, business Instagram. That's the Coven Instagram. Um, we always post all the updates of everywhere that we're going to be within, you know, a few weeks time. So that if you want to come and do your own satanic baptism at the stand, you can. Um, you can also go to my website, www.witchesanddoubles.com. Uh, all of the products, almost all of the products that are available at our stand, at our booth, are also available online if you want to go ahead and buy them there. Um, and then OnlyFans. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you, bitch. I, I wouldn't put it past you. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's a, I'll a, film it for you, honestly. Oh, I'll film yeah, it for you, I'll film a, it for you uh, for free satanic bloody only fans where we uh where we eat goats and virgins love it <laughs> love it um okay so we're gonna do a lead out really quick um where rye is going to lead us out i'm gonna say my handle rye's gonna say their handle and you're gonna say your handle and then we're just gonna say bye and then we're gonna just go into the post show Thank y'all for joining us for another Unholy Communion. I'm your co-host, Rai, a.k.a. The Mestizo Mystic on Instagram. And my name is Voga. I am Voga Illumicente. And my name is Adrian Maciel. And I am Witches and Devils on Instagram. The Witches and Devils Cover. Hail Satan. <laughs> and we will see you next. On our... No, that's for you, babe. I, oh. I let in. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next on our uh, well, oh, fuck Jesus um, fuck Jesus fuck Jesus <laughs> that's what happens when we have a Satanist on our fucking podcast <laughs> and we'll see you on our next unholy communion bye